Okay, um, okay, it's been quite a while since I've done a video like this. Uh, I've got to get ready for my mum's birthday, but I thought I'd answer some questions, but this time a little bit more informative than some of the other ones, because they've been kind of chill, which is good for me, but not very helpful for you. So let's try and rectify that a little bit. I think I like these videos because deep down in my youth, as many of us really wanted to be, I would have given anything to be like a beauty YouTuber kind of thing, so here's my attempt at that. Oh, I hate wearing contact lenses. Okay, I have a question for you to start with. If you wear glasses, would you get laser eye surgery? I've been thinking about it, but it's pricey. And I like wearing I like wearing glasses and I don't mind how they look, but I don't like I would like to have the option not to wear them. Um because I'd still wear blue light glasses anyway. So what should be included in monthly reports? That's a good question. I pull a lot of data from the um scheduler that I use, whether that be later or I've been using Falcon recently with work. So I get a lot of the information from that, so that's all of your analytics for the month. You can get these from directly from the platform itself, for example, in Instagram Insights. Um, but you should be including all of that and maybe make a note of how it compares to the previous month. So this is where you'll hear the, the term KPI thrown around quite a lot, which is key performance indicator. So this is like, for example, if your client was particularly focused on growing followers, a vanity metric, but it's something that people care about, you would, that I suppose would be a performance indicator um, KPI and um, you'd monitor how that has progressed from the previous month, so you'd add that in there. I like to use percentages to show people progress, so for example, if you're looking for a 1% increase per month, which sounds really small, but if you have 100,000 followers, that's 1,000 followers of growth per month. So yeah, keep track of all your KPIs, and I like to add in some things I'll be working on in the next month, so based on these metrics, I would like to, slash I will be. I can't multitask. I don't know how I used to be able to do these. <laughs> and I'm not saying this to be rude to anyone, and if this is if this somehow perfectly fits you, it's not intended to criticise you or anything. But you'll get people who have just started the, their job as a social media manager, um, and then be charging, you know, closer to the 200 end an hour, which, if you believe that that's what you're worth, if you have years of experience behind you, you know, and you you fully believe in those those numbers, then yeah, go for it. But if you're brand new to this, you've never done it before, this is your first ever client, I think that's a little wrong if you ask me. But who am I to judge? You do what you want, because I, maybe I wasn't charging enough, you could think of it like that. I really wasn't charging enough when it was my first client. I think I was so scared of getting in trouble, because it was almost like... I was like get, asking for some someone to send me money on PayPal and I had like little contracts set in place and everything but it was still very new to me and the idea of getting paid to post things on Instagram for people was just crazy to me. Like it didn't even feel like a real legitimate thing even though I would obviously be doing the work. I was legitimate but yeah so I think it began with like £5 an hour and then I, I bumped it up. I'm going to be transparent with numbers because you, you need to know this stuff. I bumped it up gradually over the years and I think I'd got to like £25 an hour which bear in mind minimum wage is like 9 50 here so 25 pound an hour was good really good i wasn't working 40 hours a week on or, or not i wasn't working 40 hours a week where i got 25 pound an hour for each of those hours i was working a lot probably more than 40 hours a week but a lot of the hours were 25 some i was still doing a little less or some were free because you've got to put in time for the, the kind of business side of it when you're a freelancer but then there's some projects where i'd get value from them in other ways I, like i'd learn on the job and i'd charge a lot less but i'd be getting skills i can use to be able to charge others more in the future so it's kind of you just got to think about it and make sure that you're taking into account all of the expenses that you're going to have and everything like that if you ever want to talk to me about it look, just just send me a message instagram dms are usually the best one um, and you can ask me what i think if you'd like to not that i'm anyone at all <laughs> to be giving you any opinions but yeah i'm always here to talk and for free not that i should need to clarify that but I wouldn't, I wouldn't charge just for you to, I wouldn't, just, just let me know, just to speak to me, I'm here if you need me. As I said, it's my mum's birthday today, um, so we're going out for drinks this evening, but prior to that, I'm going to sit in Costa and get some work done. And I, I love being in Costa, it sounds really stupid and almost embarrassing, but I spend a lot of time in there because I work from home on my own, so to get out of the house and sit down there for all hours of the day is quite nice to me. And the staff in there are so nice that they were running like a thing last week where uh, last weekend where they'll they get to give something to a customer um and i got chosen by two people so that's really nice uh, and it honestly it made my life it sounds well dramatic but i appreciated it so much 
Anyway, moving on. Um, do you, oh, I just mentioned that. Do you have contracts? Yes, so this is really important. And if you feel you are not qualified to give, to create a contract, to know what's in one, like, I get you. Um, I used Andco, which is, it's a paid thing, but you can get a free trial, but I think, where you get one contract, you can build one contract out of it. Um, and that's all you need, really. This one contract lasted me through all my freelancing years. I had everything that it needed, and you just obviously change any names and dates and any specifics. Um, but once you've got the bulk of the, you know, the spiel, the, all the stuff that I don't understand, you're fine. And if you really wanted to get it checked over by someone, you could. But I think it was pretty legit. I never had any problems. Um, I'm not here to give legal advice because I have literally no idea. But yeah, it all seems to work. Since then, I have done a bit of work with contracts where, like, I do feel comfortable changing them and rewording them and reshaping them, but that's just been over the years. So I get that when you first see it, it looks really intimidating, but it's not too bad. They just, I think it's use fancy words to intimidate you intentionally. Yeah, I found contracts kind of get in the way of a lot of stuff because people people are intimidated and, and, the, and they feel kind of tied down and roped into something that they feel like they didn't sign up for. So I think being able to reword contracts carefully if you need to, or maybe summarise them a little bit is helpful. Which part of your role is your favourite? That's a good question. Um, I really enjoy meetings. Maybe that's again the loneliness coming out, which is odd because I'm incredibly introverted. Like I thrive on like the workday ending and me having nothing to do but watch Gilmore Girls. Like that's that's my that's my happy place. Yeah, I really like talking to it, people, and it's interesting to get to know people more and especially people in the industry and I get to speak to some pretty incredible people and I'm very honoured to be able to do that so I really do like that but when I'm just on my own I enjoy well there's some nice little bits when I'm doing influencer work I get to obviously online shop to buy people's clothes and as much as I wish they were for me um, they're not but it's quite therapeutic it feels the same as buying for yourself um, except you're not spending your own money <laughs> so it's quite nice I also like as I say, there may be more mundane tasks. I like filling out spreadsheets, I like scheduling stuff, which I've got a lot of scheduling to do today, which is nice, good day today. Uh, so yeah, maybe they're my favourites. I don't know what I would outsource out of the stuff that I do now. Maybe some of the influencer stuff, because it can be quite quite a lot, and a lot of people and conversations going on and a lot to keep on top of. So I guess having assistance with that would be good, but it's not worth it for me right now. Or even appropriate because I have, I do have the time to do it. Like I, I can fit it into my schedule. It's just a lot, basically. So I feel like I'm missing something big. I had um, months ago now where I met with one of the guys I work with, and we went to co-working space in Manchester for a couple of days, and it was just incredible. Like it was so nice to have someone to work with because I meet up with a friend for work every so often, and I really enjoy that. But to have someone that is from the the company, and we were doing working on projects together. It was really cool and like I, I sound really sad sometimes I think when I talk about work but I genuinely do enjoy it and I feel very lucky to enjoy it because I know a lot of people don't and even now I know people who's no disrespect against them but their goal is to just get a job that they can tolerate and their life is going to begin on the weekend and I get I agree that we should live to work to live not live to work but I don't see anything wrong with doing a bit of both uh, is there anything exciting happening lately I guess actually, yeah, so other than my little Costa experience, which I've been doing some TikTok lives and it's helped me grow a little bit over there, um, which I found direct results linking to Instagram as well um, in terms of growth. Nothing crazy, really nothing crazy, but enough for me to have noticed. And that's literally just me sat here working in silence minus the One Direction playing in the background. It sounds really dumb sitting there in silence, but it's, it's quite pleasant actually, and you get a few nice comments and I think... I found other people sit and work there as well, just with background music and feeling like you're not sat on your own can be kind of comforting for people. Um, I'm going on a trip, a work trip, um, to Berlin in, uh, wow, like, in a week I'm going, wow, okay, in a week I'm going to Portugal um, with my friend and her family, and then from Portugal I'm flying straight to Berlin, and yeah, going on a, there for a work trip, which is like, incredibly exciting. I'm playing it down right now because I can feel the coffee wearing out um, but it's really cool to be quite honest in my head, like like it's crazy um, yeah that's absolutely insane quite frankly it's unbelievable I get to be part of something so 
so cool like it's what on earth like sometimes i do feel really this is why you should romanticize stuff like this this is really cool it's cool like it's enjoy it enjoy every second of it even the the mundane spreadsheets like i'm happy to be doing spreadsheets one day and then in another country the next day that's that's cool that is cool i guess another cool thing um sure. sounds rude and but yeah, it's not supposed to be my uh ex moved out a few weeks ago um so i now completely live on my own which is really cool actually like it's kind of expensive <laughs> and um and the place feels a lot bigger when it's just you uh but it's all my space this is my office now uh which it was his old room there's still a bed in here because i don't know what i'm supposed to do with double bed but it's it's an office space and it's been amazing to get to leave work in one room and then have the rest of the house be your relaxing space because prior to that i used to work in my bedroom or in the living room or the kitchen table you know i'd move around the house a bit but now even my, my phone charges and stuff saying here like i don't go in this room other than to work and that's like sounds like nothing like it sounds like that wouldn't mean anything but it it's a big change honestly i've not been liking my makeup recently and today has continued that trend i feel like i'm missing something i hate the setting spray it's the mac fix plus but i like the morphe one that's like a kind of aerosol this just isn't isn't nice i just feel horrible <laughs> i've not worn makeup for so long and it just you can just feel it on your face so maybe i should just start going for a lighter when i say i don't wear makeup i mean that but i, I wear like i'll do like a little bit of mascara and just some brow gel to keep them in place but full face for a very long time so i feel a little bit weird but yeah thanks for joining this q a with me i really enjoyed it i love this style of video like i say if you need anything just message me on instagram i had a really lovely call once and by the end of it it felt almost like they were waiting for me to sell them a course or sell them some sort of thing and then charge them for my services or something but we just had a nice call we had a, a coffee and we talked about stuff and i gave little bits of advice um, and it's just, I don't know, I, I know that this is like an industry and people need to make money and I, I get all of that. I don't know, I just wish we could be a bit nicer to each other sometimes. I'll let you go. Thank you for watching. Thank you for keeping me company while I get ready today. Not my finest of looks, but it will have to do. I'm going to go and get a coffee and I'll see you soon. Bye.